and welcome back for another video another episode for our quality assurance instrumentation and, and laboratory entrepreneurship so a while back we were discussing about your clinical chemistry so right now we're gonna dig into your hematology so again greeting every one of you there the o4 and the o5 so i hope everyone is having a great day even if it is locked down so i hope everyone is just staying at home and simply just studying and enjoying your favorite netflix show so by the way um what we're going to discuss now is the quality control procedures that are being done in your hematology although i will not be um dealing so much about the different tests and automation in hematology because that will be part of your um hematology section hematology subjects comes next semester for your third year so what i'm just gonna discuss now are the of course the basic in hematology qc and i'll be discussing to you your histograms and your scatter plots which are very important in actually detecting what are the different errors and what are the different things that we need to remember when it comes to hematology okay so let's dig in so hematology first and foremost is a course that deals with the fundamentals of blood as a tissue pathophysiology and its mechanism on coagulation and hemostasis again with emphasis on laboratory procedures so as you can see we're not just studying what are the different blood cells what are the different coagulation factors, your fibrinogen becoming your fibrin, and then your fibrin networks, your fibrin clot, but more so on the laboratory procedures that we are doing in the laboratory. Okay, so whether it is diagnostic, so actually most are diagnostic procedures in the laboratory. So the students are expected to demonstrate the knowledge and principles learned from this course. So that will be what is expected from you comes third year. Okay, so for your hematology, we actually have the same. We also have internal quality control and external quality control when it comes to your um, when it comes to your hematology. Okay, so again, before you run your sample, the first thing you need to do is to always run your QC. So again, review. What is the objective of your QC? I'll give you 10 seconds. Ah, uh, what? Okay, time's up. <laughs> is, is that 10 seconds? Of course not. But technically, the main objectives of our QC, okay, all together now, is to what? To check the stability of your machine, to check the quality of your agent, and of course, to also assess the competence of your technical staff. So technically, okay, so before you run your samples, you need to do your quality control, okay? So unlike other quality control that we have, okay, like in your clinical chemistry, we only have two, but by the way, except for electrolytes, we have your low, your normal, and your high controls. But for hematology, we always have your three controls or your three parameters, okay? And we have here, as you can see, they are different in color so this one is high this one is low the other one is actually normal similar to this one that you see in your screen we have your low control your normal control and your high control this is very important sir why do we need to have three levels of control or why does there a need to have multiple level con multiple level controls the first is since you want to you want to assess the stability of your machine and the quality of your agent, you also have to make sure if they are actually able to to measure the lowest concentration, the highest abnormal or whether it is normal or abnormal, and also the normal controls. Okay, so that's one um very very good reason why do we have multiple level controls? Okay, so let's dig in. So. For hematology, okay, um, again, similar to what was um, being said a while back, I will not deal with 
too much of the internal quality control anymore because it's actually the very same thing that we do in all others all other sections but before i move on i just remembered that when it comes to external quality control it is coming from the national kidney transplant institute so usually we have your unknowns being sent in the laboratory and i say again similar to how you do it in clinical chemistry you also run it in the same manner that you run your samples each and every day in the laboratory so you're gonna ha- you're you'll be having at least three unknown whole blood and of course you will be um running that in your hema analyzer the same manner that you run your qc this three and the same manner that you run your your samples or question you're in your pmlsp2 what is the test tube used or what is the color of the top that is being used for complete blood count five seconds four three two one answer and the answer is your lavender top okay your lavender top or your purple top containing your edta your ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid or again another question what is the most common form of edta being used in the cbc three two one and the answer would be your k2 edta or your di potassium edta correct i hope you're getting it correct okay so for the hematology what we will be discussing more are actually your histograms so what are histograms we have different histograms we have your red se- red blood cell histogram your white your platelet and also we will also be talking quickly about your scatter plot okay so let's move on now sir maybe you're asking sir what are histograms so histograms are actually a graphical representation of the numerical data that you measured so isn't it that you have your automated um, cell counter when it comes in to hematology so I will not be digging too much about the principle of, of those machines yet but what we're trying to, to discuss here is how are you going to to make sure that there is a stability of your machine the quality of your reagent and also the technical staff so technically you can we can make use of your histograms okay so technically if you're running your samples you can assess the run according to its histogram or according to its scatter plot so let's move on so blood cell histograms yes we have different blood cell histograms like i what i have mentioned we have your red blood cell histogram we have your wbc histograms and we also have your platelet histograms so let's go first to your blood cell histogram so what are blood cell histograms specifically your red cell this is your rbc histograms so your rbc histograms provide provided by many high volume instruments to provide size distribution of different cell population so as you all know we can actually we're actually measuring them we are actually measuring them according to their sizes so technically um your machine are able to discriminate your platelet from your rbc from your wbc according to their sizes okay so the volume given in cubic millimeter or in femtoliter that is femtoliter fem to liter is plotted against a relative frequency for platelets wbc and even rbc so these types of histograms will provide an approximate number of the cells coming from your y-axis and the cell size coming from your x-axis so again reviewing what is the independent where can you find the independent variable how about the dependent variables i hope you still remember doi and axi so th- the dependent is found in the ordinate which is your y that is the reason why here what we have in the y axis is the number of cell on the other hand the cell size is found in your axis which is in your axis that is axi abscissa x axis your independent variable 
Okay? So, this is an example of your histogram actually. But what I am going to show you are actually a histogram with your bell curve. So, technically, what we have here in your y-axis is your relative number or your um, cell number or your volume. And then here, what you're going to see on the x-axis are actually your um are actually your sizes okay so be, but for you to be able to understand what are rbc histograms i'll be discussing very Im four very important things first so in rbc histograms okay the instrument being used counts the cell with volumes greater than 36 femtoliter okay which are now considered as your erythrocytes so technically okay our goal is to have your RBC histogram at the center, okay? At the center. I'll be showing you a picture later on. So, if the RBCs are larger than the normal, the curve now will shift to the right, okay? The curve now will shift to the right, and the RB if the RBCs now are smaller, or, yeah, are smaller in size, they will actually be shifting to the left, okay? They will be shifting to the left. And let me show to you, oh my God, let me show you, how it happens okay so before we um before we discuss the the histogram let me first discuss to you rbc indices okay rbc index or rbc indices so we have here your mean cell volume also known as your mcv we have here your mean cell hemoglobin or your mch and your mchc also known as your mean cell hemoglobin concentration so, mean cell volume or your MCV is the average volume of your red cell, red blood cell. So, they are expressed in femtoliters or in 10,215 liters. So, the reference interval for MCV is 80 to 100. So, I took this definition from RODA, which is um, our reference book for hematology because you will be seeing other nor reference interval for your MCV. But what we're talking about is 80 to 100. So, what does the MCV indicate? It actually indicates the size of your RBC. Okay? Kung gaano siya kaliit or kung gaano siya kalaki. So, RBCs with an MCV less than 80 are microcytic. Okay? We, the term we use to define an RBC of smaller size than the normal is microcytic. Okay? So, smaller cells, technically. And if the MCV now is greater than 100, we call them your macrocytic or large cells. Macro, big, cytic, your cell. Your micro, small, cytic, your cell. So, technically, look at this one. Your reference interval is 80 to 100. If the value of your MCV. Sir, how do we... Actually, your machine is able to produce your MCV. Okay? Your machine is able to produce your MCV. So, sir, question. How can we... um How can we know the MCV? It will be produced again by your machine. Okay? I'll, I will not be asking you to compute it anyway. So, that's not part of quality yet. Okay. So... 80 to 100 FL or 80 to 100 femtoliter is your reference interval. If the value of your MCV is less than 80, meaning the cells are, the RBCs are smaller by size. Okay? Smaller by size. So, they will now be called your microcytic. Okay? They are microcytic. If they are larger, okay? If you have larger RBC, and the MCV is 100 FL, we call them now macrocytic, okay? macrocytic RBC. So technically, again, if less than 80, it's microcytic. If greater than 100, it is macrocytic. So that is how you know if your cells are actually of normal size, if they are smaller, or if they are large in size. Okay, so technically, you can also prepare a blood smear for you to be able to check it. Okay, so moving on, we have your MCH. Although MCH is not of 
um frequent usage because it in the it doesn't um being you it, it it is not being used that much so rbc histograms we also have your rbc index your mch which is an average weight of your hemoglobin in a rbc cell r in a red blood cell so it, it, it is expressed on the other hand in picograms okay so i'll move on immediately to your m c h c so here the mchc is the average concentration of your hemoglobin in each individual rbc so the cell units use are grams per deciliter which is formerly before percentage okay so we are now using grams per deciliter so the normal value okay or the or the normal the normal cells would actually appear as salmon pink okay as salmon pink but if they are actually f colored fainter okay lighter or even colorless to a lighter pink we call them hypochromic and if they are s heavily stained with your um heavily stained or they are really reddish in color those are now hyperchromic cells okay hyperchromic cells so sir how why is mchc important so we we are checking mchc because it indicates the average hemoglobin in each rbc and it's very important because at the end of the day the function of your rbc is actually what is actually to um carry your oxygen and also your carbon dioxide and other gases for guts exchange so your normocytic cell your normocytic cell meaning normal value or normal content of hemoglobin is around 32 to 36 grams per deciliter okay so here it goes again a little anything lower than 32 you call it hypochromic ibig sabihin it is faint 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 colored or mapusyaw sa tagalog okay if it is hyperchromic it is actually greater than 36 grams per deciliter so what we're having here now ay masyadong makakapal na kulay ng rbc so these are heavily stained rbc because again of a high content of hemoglobin sir di ba mas maganda yon no because that's abnormal okay those are abnormal so i hope everything is clear but before i move on i also want to define your red your rdw or your red cell distribution with okay your rdw and i will be introducing to you very important terms okay let me use my words so that you'll be able to to see it so we actually have here your let me use a, a new one okay so you have here your red cell or your rbc distribution width okay and it actually indicates the differences in the in the sizes of your rbc okay it indicates the differences of your rbc sizes okay sizes and right now what i want is actually to introduce a term to you we have your anisocytosis and you also have your anisochromatosis okay so your anisocytosis to be specific this is what i want as to really dig into that before we move on your anisocytosis is actually characterized as the abnormal sizes abnormal sizes of your cell so we have large cell rbc normal rbc and we also have your we also have your microcytic so microcytic if in your in your red blood cells you have your your uh, microcytic your macrocytic and you have your normocytic cells normocytic normal size cells okay we also include that okay we also include that so we also have your anisochromia or an yeah anisochromia so let anisochromia not anisochromia 
Anisochromia, on the other hand, is a marked variability in the color of your RBC. Okay? So, if you're anisocytosis, okay, anisocytosis now is um, the variability variability in sizes, okay? On the other hand, your anisochromia or anisochromia is the variability in your RBC colors. So, we have, you have your faint colors, you have your salmon pink and you also have heavy red so technically those are your terms okay so going back now okay going back now to your rbc histograms this is how they actually look like Ayan. so again this is just a review if your rbc again are if your rbc your mcv is higher than higher than 100, okay, or higher than 100, those are macrocytic, it will shift to the, what? It will shift to the right. If they are smaller, if will, it will shift to the left. So again, let's review. If it is um, microcytic, meaning small RBC, will shift to the left. Large RBC, meaning big, large RBCs are macrocytic, they will shift to the right, okay? Right for big, left for small. Okay. So, this is an example of your RBC histogram. Again, going back, what was the normal value for your RBC, uh, your MCV? What is the normal value, value for your MCV? As we took from RODAC. Okay. So, that is very important for you to remember. 30 to 36, that is for your MCHC. But for your um for your MCV it is eighty to one hundred. Okay, it is eighty to one hundred. So let's move on. So this is an example of your histogram. So eighty to one hundred. So what you want is actually your MC your this is actually a histogram now. So take for example this is the histogram for your RBC. As you can see, you can see the platelet histogram so closely so we have here 80 to 100 so what you want is actually your your histogram will actually be between 80 to 100 okay this is 80 to 100 and you have your lower discriminating um value so meaning lower than lower than 80 and this is your upper okay this your upper unit or your upper discriminating criteria or, or value so if your cells now okay if your cells now are greater than 100 or the mcv is greater than 100 it will now shift to the right okay look at my cursor it will it will now shift to the right rather okay it will now shift to the right these are now your macrocytes okay your macrocytes if they are lower than 80 below 80 so technically these are microsites. They will now pick. Okay? This is your pick. They will now shift to the left. Okay? Shift to the left for microsites. Shift to the right for your macrocytes. So, what about now your RDW? RDW, what I want you to, to look, uh, look at is the width of your bell curve. This one. Yung width ng bell curve. Or yung lapad ng bell curve. Okay? Huwag masaktan sa lapad. Hindi ikaw yung tinutukoy. Okay. So, we're talking about the width of your, your, the width of distribution. Okay? So, technically, what, what we also want here is that it will be within the normal limit. But, take for example, it is wider. Okay? It is wider. Meaning, you have a variety of RBC sizes. You have your small your microcytic, you have your normocytic, you also have your macrocytic RBCs. And you don't like that, okay? You just want the normal, the the micro, the normocytic, okay? So that is for your RBC, okay? That is for your RBC. If you have any questions, I'll be going live later tonight. So if you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll be answering it as soon as I get to your comments, okay? So... Um, I hope everything is clear. 
So again, this is your RBC. So we have your MCV. So technically, ginagamit natin yung yung histogram for us to be able to check your RBC distribution. Okay, RBC distribution because most of the time, just the value, you don't see it. Some of us are very visual and you have to we have to look at it if it is shifting to the right or shifting to the left already. All right? So let's move on. Okay? We have also have your platelets his platelet histogram. So similar to your RBC histogram, so platelet derived histograms are also obtained from volume sizes 2 to 20 femtoliter. Unlike your your RBC which are actually being um measured at 80 to 100, when it comes to your your platelet histograms, it is actually from 2 to 20. Sir, why but but mababa? Why is it very low as comp is it's why is it lower as compared to your RBC? Again, going back because your platelets in general are very small in size. Okay, very small in size. Sometimes you mis have mistaken it as fragments. They are very really very small in size. So the actual counting take place also in the RBC ar aperture. So what do we mean by that? So the same channel. Okay, the same window. So take for example the. Your cells are actually passing through a tube and there is a window whereby electricity is coming out and they will be measured according to their electrical impedance. Okay, electrical impedance. So, yes, that's very technical. But technically, wh what do I mean by the same RBC aperture? So, where your RBC is measured, your platelets are also being measured there. Okay. So we have different interferences when it comes to platelet histogram. Okay? So lower region interference meaning there are um we have platelets less than 2 femtoliter. This indicates electrical interference meaning there are some disturbances in your machine. That's why you have a peak. So a, a measurement or a peak when it comes to your when it comes to your um, platelet. I hope I'm clear with them say when I'm mentioning peak, ha. So isn't it in a wave in physics before when we were in in high school? This is your peak, okay? Yung peak, yung tok tok kumbaga, okay? So technically, if you're if you have a peak or on the less than two femtoliter, that is actually electrical interference, meaning my error. That is an example of random error. So, on the other hand, you also have your upper region interference. If greater than 20 femtoliter, this now indicates microcytic RBC. O, oh, see? Nakita ninyo? Some of the RBCs that are very small in size could be mistakenly counted as your platelets. Okay? As your platelets. What, sir, what are schistocytes? Schistocytes now are your RBC fragments. Okay? RBC fragments. So, Technically, micros microcytic RBC and schistocytes all are being mistakenly identified now as your platelet. On the other hand, why do we have clumped of platelet? Isn't it like what I mentioned, platelets in general are smaller. So, what happens if they are actually, they clump together? So Take, take for example, um, they are, they clump together either mistake in your your anticoagulant in your collection in your inversion or technically there are really some abnormalities with your patient so you will also be seeing your 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 clumped rbcs okay your clump wbc rather so uh, clump platelets okay clump platelets so na namuong platelets so technically if your platelet clump together, they can be mistaken as an RBC because of their size. Okay? So that is for your platelet histogram. And your for your platelet histogram, you usually see them here. Okay? So unlike your, unlike your technically, if you have here on this part, if you have here on this part your RBC histogram, your platelet histogram would go a little left because it's smaller. Okay, so this is an example of a normal platelet histogram. This is an example of an abnormal. Sir, why abnormal? Technically, because you have a peak. Okay, you have a peak. Again, yung lapad again talks about 
yung vary yung variability sa sizes so technically you have here your giant platelets because it's already shifting to the right okay it shifts to the right similar to your rbc okay we have your giant platelets and again if it is less than 2 femtoliter it is an electrical interference okay i hope we're clear actually we're about to finish now we're on our wbc histograms okay your wbc histograms is the their sizes is very vast we have from 35 to 450 femtoliter which is the reference size range for your wbc so how can we now identify wbc okay how can we identify the wbc so normal wbc histograms have three distribution peaks okay again when i am talking about peak ito yung tok tok you have three technically three readings there the first peak okay is actually from 45 to 90 femtoliter and i want you to be familiar about this okay your first peak is for your small mononuclear population of cells so again reviewing we have five different wbc or leukocytes we have your lymphocytes we have your monocytes your basophil eosinophil and of course the most abundant your neutrophil so technically when do doing your histograms we have three peaks okay three peaks so diba five bakit three lang again i'll explain that later on so we have only three peaks so three peaks 45 to 90 femtoliter so these are small mononuclear populations of cells which are now your lymphocytes so meaning the, the cells that you can see on the first peak, 45 to 90 femtoliters, are your lymphocytes. Okay? Be it B or T lymphocyte, basta lymphocytes. Are we clear? Okay. So, on the other hand, we have the second peak. What can we see on the second peak? These are now minor population of your large mononuclear cells. So, these are cells... Um, ranging from 90 to 160 femtoliter so usually we have here your monocytes your blast your immature granulocyte and your reactive lymphocyte your blast your immature granulocyte and your reactive lymphocytes are um okay your blast and your reactive lymphocytes are abnormal they could should not be seen in your peripheral um, circulation. Your immature granulocyte can uh, can be your stab, kasi can be your stab if it's if it, it's a an immature neutrophil palang. So technically, okay, the only normal that you will always be seeing there are your monocytes, o, diba? So if the first peak you will be identifying there the lymphocyte, the second peak now will give you your monocytes. Okay, are we clear? And of course, the last part, the third peak now, will be giving you your granulocytes. And we have your granulocytes, your basophils, your eosinophil, and your neutrophil that range from 160 to 400 femtoliter. Okay, so let's review again. Okay, 45 to 90, first peak, 45 to 90, that is your lymphocyte. So, first peak, 45 to 90, your lymphocyte, second peak. 90 to 160 second pick 90 to 160 that is your monocytes your third pick 160 to 450 femtoliter that is your granulocytes your AO your baso and your neutrophils so this is now a three part differential okay what do i mean by three part differential you are only able to differentiate your WBC from lymphocytes from monocytes and from your granulocytes is sir we have maybe some of you are asking sir how do they do that isn't it we have your your wbc differential count and you have there the five different um the five different um wbc how can we do the five part differential okay in the five part differential you we, we will be using your we will be using your we will be using your um we will be using your scatter plot so looking back now here in your your wbc histogram okay so your lymphocytes are actually on the first pick okay 
So by the way, ayan pala, the only gran- the in your second peak, it is your monocyte together with your basophil and your eosinophil. Okay? Basophil and eo are included pala in the second peak. So the only granulocyte that is in your in your third peak are your neutrophils. Okay? Your neutrophils are the the, the ones found in your third peak. So technically, how the a, a question would be coming into your mind um how can i differentiate your mono your baso from your ao maya maya sasagutin natin yan so again ha first peak okay lympho second peak your mono baso ao in the third peak your neutrophil please remember the sizes by femtoliters okay so before that i'll just want to show this so technically this is how this is the use now of your um this is now the use of your histograms so if you see diba normally ayan the, the normal distribution natin ayan the normal distribution natin diba um lympho mono ao baso and the neutrophil you see a peak here ang taas taas o oh. ang taas nung ang taas nung nung third peak so ibig sabihin there is an increase neutrophil and i want you to be to start learning how to read these things okay so if the third peak is high so high that is neutrophilia neutrophilia meaning there are increased number of neutrophils on the other hand here lymphocytosis you have increased number of okay hindi po lymphophilia ha it's lymphocytosis so there is increased um lymphocytes because as you can see there is a peak in your um for there is a very high peak in your first peak okay we also have your monocytes and your eosinophilia and this is the problem now sir paano namin ihihiwalay sa eosinophilia from monocyte eh, they belong both of them belong to the second peak correct diba how are you gonna this is the problem oh we have your monocytosis and your eosinophilia if you're just looking your your three part differential you will only be seeing one peak and all are actually on the middle part on the second peak so how are, how are we going to fix that we will now be using your five part differential and we are able to do that by scatter plots okay and your scatter plots on the other hand are white blood cell identification okay this are white blood cell identification is facilitated by analysis of electrical impedance so that is the process that is the principle of the machine and light scattering properties of your wbc so technically what's what's going to happen is that your scatter plot okay your scatter plot represents the relationship between volume and your light scattering which is which is your y axis okay your y axis so technically in your x axis we're measuring the we're measuring the side we're measuring the volume and in your y axis we're measuring your light scatter okay so this is now your scatter plot so usually the the one that you would see on the section a are your monocytes in your section B are your neutrophils, eosinophils in your section C, and lympho are denoted on the section D. And I'll be showing it to you this way. Okay? So this is your scatter plot. Okay? This is your scatter plot. So the one that you found here on A are actually your monocytes. The one that you found in your B, these are your neutrophils. The one that you found here on letter C, these are your eosinophils. This one, this letter D here, these are your lymphocytes. And the very, very small here, sometimes absent, are your basophils. Are we clear? So technically, this is your monocytes. These are your neutrophils. These are your eosinophil, your your baso, and your your baso and your lympho. So sir, what is the use of your 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 scatter plot? Again, by merely looking at this one, you will be seeing now the distribution. If much are actually so usually the 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 most predominant the most predominant 
WBC is of course your letter B, your neutrophil. Next to that is your lymphocytes and then your monocytes. As you can see the distribution. So technically, paano sir if increase yung neutrophils? Unlike your histograms na may peak, di ba? Unlike your histograms na may peak, it will actually appear more darker here. So it will appear more darker on your letter B if there are neutrophilia. Okay, neutrophilia. If there are actually mono or lymphocytosis, there will actually be appearing more darker here. Okay, this one, dito naman, your eosinophils. So, I hope I'm really getting through with this. I hope I'm really um, communicating how is it being read. If you have any questions, just um, comment down below or uh, wait for me when I go live tonight so your monocytes your neutrophils and you have your lymphocytes so technically ito well sir dugtong natin how can we use your histograms and your scatter plot in quality control in hematology so technically by merely looking at the at this one you will now be able to see which are those that needs to be manually checked Okay, so if your histogram, if your scatter plot is appearing very strange or different than the usual, than the normal, you have to double check it. Okay, you have to double check it. Either it is really your sample, which is the problem, or maybe there are some disturbances in your machine or deterioration in your, your deterioration in your reagents and even the quality of the blood collection so you will be able to see it there okay so i hope i was able to communicate everything i need to communicate so that is for your hematology for today so um remember you will be having your post quiz and i will be posting that in your schoology okay You're, you will be having your your post quiz in your schoology so please wait for um the announcement in your fb group for for more of the details and aside from that i am and aside from that um your quizzes will actually be happening on wednesday okay on wednesday so just a quote before we part ways so not everything you give up is a loss so if you're sad right now thinking that you gave up a lot of things that made you happy um, I am here to tell you that not all the things that you gave up is actually a loss. Some are really necessary for you to grow, for you to be able to realize what are the things that you want and the things that you do not like anymore. And at the end of the day, okay, at the end of the day, this this is the mindset that we should always have. Sometimes you try to hold things so tight in your hands that you are not able to receive the best things that are coming and sometimes you just really have to let them go you just really have to to let go the things that are no longer benefiting you or not lo no longer beneficial to you and you have to let go and empty your hands and hope for the best uh, because the best is yet to come so again good morning and i hope that you have a great day so this has been Sir Jomar Adams and thank you very much for your time and I will see you again next time for our, I will see you again next time for our next Quale video. So have a great day.